we're coming into the detour from the southern side and let's see what improvements we've got from here. Now, so far I can't see. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll put up a map. Uh, so we'll have to put up a fence here at the right hand turn. There's a map on it. And unfortunately, it's going to be the same old map which just needs a little. <laughs> Someone's uh, drawn up where you're supposed to go using baby poo brown, which really doesn't stand out at all. And it's also confusing what the route is because the route they've got drawn up in baby poo brown just blends in the background beautifully rather than using red for instance. It directs you to come south on Queen Victoria Street, cross Queen Victoria Street at a terrible crossing, then turn north uh, on Queen Victoria Street, go up to Titan Road and then go along. It's, it's just absolutely nonsensical. There's something wrong with it. I don't know if I'm misinterpreting the map completely, but um, yeah, just, just a simple bit of, are they going to stop for me? I can never tell. Um, yeah, I, it's just really not clear where you're supposed to go. So, going along here again, it's where they've hidden the signage there behind those tarps. Uh, sorry, the maps. And, the, and that map is the one that takes you around East Street which is still a valid detour if you want to go around to the Canning Bridge via Apple Cross, for instance. But it's, uh, it's of no use to the route that I'm about to take. And of course it's being put like that rather than like that. It's down at ground level and now it's behind a tarp. Variable message sign. Uh, good, nice, clear, easy to read sign. That's all great. Completely wrong location. Detour signage in advance, uh, that's good, that's better. No warning signage here though. Um, right, there's a map there now. Again, that's the right map for this detour. Okay, well, I just missed a sign, so I need to go straight ahead. Maybe I was focusing too much on the map. That's the problem when you're doing this kind of thing. Let's go back and do that again. Alright, so there was a detour sign back there telling me to turn left. Okay, the detour signs that were there previously telling me to turn left to use the East Street detour are no longer there. There's nothing telling me to go straight across here. And of course I've now got to deal with cars coming from behind me. use their engine brakes in the city. Beats the hell out of me. Okay. Again, there's nothing that a nice bit of resurfacing wouldn't fix like it. There he goes again on his engine brake. Don't get it. Um, yeah, anyway, poor surface. A bit of forward planning. Uh, this just could have been resurfaced. Now there is a, a, a gap, what do you call it? <sighs> Bottleneck there. Now again, someone needs to come along with a, a hedge trimmer and just knock that shrubbery there, that plant, whatever you want to call it, back so it's in line with the fence. Because uh, look, the, the ground drops away very steeply there. There's really not much you can do about this, but see how much of the path is taken up. You don't have much of a gap there between the pole and this thing. So just take, you know, line it up the edge of that concrete uh, block at the bottom there and take it back to at least that, open the path up. Simple things like that, you know. Doesn't cost a lot of money, doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, the sign here has been relocated. That's a much better uh, location gotta say. Come around the corner here. It's only really nothing until we get to the other side of the bridge. Alright, coming off the 
bridge here, this path is broken in places on the edges. Um, but now we've got a sign here, that's good. Um, I don't know what this is going to be like after dark when this becomes, well I'm assuming this is going to be a 24 hour, 7 day week detour at some point when they have to close or actually demolish the Queen Victoria Street Bridge. I don't know when they're going to do that, but I don't think it's going to be a lot of light filtering down through the trees here. So, are they going to put in uh, those temporary kind of generator driven lights along there? Um, they, they put them along the paths of the causeway project. I never saw them lit up, it's never there at night, but that would be really useful. Okay, coming along here, got the signage back there. I think this could be turned into a continuous footpath across here, or at the very least, just put down a strip of uh, that green, uh, what do you call it, surface treatment stuff, that polymer, plasticized, whatever, with the with the grit in it. Okay, I've really got to look over my right shoulder there to check there's no one wanting to turn across me as I come through there. So again, that would be good as a continuous footpath. I'm not saying it could be done for this project, it might be too late, maybe not. Um, right, there's some signage here, lying on the ground. Don't know if anyone's inspected that since yesterday. Crossing here, good look to my right. Now I could safely cross, but uh, I've got a red uh, dude there, so I better not. Someone will get upset. Oh, you crossed against the green light. Okay. So that's what I mean about where the detour on those maps takes you. That it says you ride down that side of the footpath past the Swan Hotel down there. Where those red barriers are, you cross back across the path, come back up on the other side where this lady in blue is walking, and then go back where I just went. I mean, that's completely stupid. It's like an appendix, you know? Why is that there? But at least that's the way I read the map. Now that might not be the way the, uh, the map maker intended it, but that's the way I read it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn left and have a look at what it looks like down to uh, the bridge, just to see if any change has been made to the signage. Oh, the one thing I would say about uh, where they put those fences up and put the maps on them. As usual, I would just stick, I would stick Hessian up on the fence behind the map, just so it stands out. Or wrap it in, they must have some kind of wrap for this project. Uh, you know, I'm saying what a wonderful thing it is and the great stuff the state government's doing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's a map there, which shows the detour. And then, what does this one show us? about oh okay so the pedestrian cyclist detour is in green it's really hard to read from here the, the closure is in red uh, and orange so look I would look for the red and orange frankly because it stands out the green stuff not so much and funnily enough it's directing us all the way up to Port Beach Road and not up uh, Pier Street or Jewel Parade so I don't get that particularly. I, I would have, if I was doing that, I would have said go along the footpath to Jewel Parade or, or Pier Street, you know, the obvious one because it's a, it's a bike route, turn right there. So I think whoever made that map up has never cycled around this area. Now, if you can read that on the camera, you're doing well. If you can't read it on the camera, then I think you'll probably understand why I'm bitching and moaning about uh, the colours that are used on the maps and how indistinct they are. They haven't really been road tested. Okay, we've got another map up here. As usual, the traffic controllers have stopped over there where they've blocked the sight lines. That's not real good, but I'm going to do a Yui here. Um, 
same old map. And a gripe of mine, as uh, a former, former infantryman, is the map there is upside down and it's not oriented to the ground. That's, uh, that's assuming that's how they still teach in the army. You always orient, orientate the map to the ground before you do anything. Now that would be a lot more trouble when printing maps because you would have to do a map plan essentially where on your, on your diagram you'd have to say right we're going to put maps here, here, here and here. Oh, which way is the user facing when they're reading this map while oh, they're facing this way? Okay, we've got to twist the map around this way or that way or through 180 degrees so it's readable. Oh, here's another one. Okay. So another example of uh, put up the map, good, and it's facing one way. I, you know, it's on the pole. Why not? It's got eyelets. Why not just cable tie a map to the back of it so they're back to back? It doesn't matter which way you're coming, read a map. If the map gets blown around in the wind or some peanut comes past and uh, twists it around, it doesn't matter so much. You've still got a map. Now, that's what I was saying before about see how that truck completely blocks the visibility of any vehicle coming down the slip lane. Um, so, you know, when I get a, a, a green signal to cross here, if that truck is still there, when I get to that island, if anyone comes down the slip lane, the first we're going to see each other is as I pop out from behind the truck. It's another reason why I would make those... Um, uh, wombat crossings, just to make sure drivers slow down on approach, and uh, and somehow warn the cyclists and pedestrians. You don't go blacking across there, you know, full pelt. You've got to uh, actually look to your left for, uh, for approaching traffic. And again, in terms of wayfinding here, to make it easier for cyclists and pedestrians to know where to go. Now you could put down that green uh, polymer stuff across the road here. We we'll probably wear off really quickly under this, this truck traffic, but hey, it's only got to last a year or two until the project's finished. And when it gets to the other side, it would bend around on that path to the left. So, you know, when you're, you're riding along here and maybe you haven't seen the signs or something, it's like, just follow the green paint or the red paint or whatever, purple paint, or whatever it is you want to use, rainbow colored paint. Um, so that as I come across here, I go, oh, look, it's bending around to my left here. I will just follow what's on the path. And you can say to kids, if you're riding with uh, your kids, hey kids, just follow the, the green path, red path, whatever the hell it is. Okay, there's no one coming up to your parade. I'm not gonna bother riding up there. I'm just gonna go up to this corner at Pier Street and see if there's some improved uh, signage here. It's pretty tricky to do because there's just no room to work with. And this is why I really favor sending, making the route go up uh, dual parade instead of this. So, okay. Um, now I got a sign, it's got a cyclist logo, it's got a map, that's good. The map again is uh, upside down. <laughs> At least there's a map there. That's, <laughs> it's, it's like one step forward, one step back. So, look, I gotta say to the guys that came out and did this, um, it's, it's really nice to see someone's actually paying attention and uh, doing some improvements. But if you really want to, uh, if you really want to get it up to an appropriate level, an acceptable level, do it on doing. Go and find a bike somewhere, jump on it, ride through. You don't have to record it. You can, you can if you want. If you've got a budget to buy a camera or something. But uh, here we go. Put down tra traffic counts. Um, the quality of your observations and the number of risks you'll pick up should improve substantially, uh, as well as an appreciation for what's required, and might also, well, should also help you thinking about, well, you know, can we think outside the box here and come up with some alternative solutions to what we've got in place at present? Because just whacking out more signage may not work. Sending the pedestrians up here, some down Jewel Bay. That's kind of out of the box stuff you want to look for. Um, 
there. Do a pertinent inspection. So it says the Austroad stuff. Pertinent. This thing that I'm on. It's pertinent. Alright, next uh, review is either going to be next week or sometime in November. Until then, I'll see you later.